This video is dedicated to Outlaw. Outlaw, thank you for supporting the EDH channel. Merin of Clan Neltoth versus Okagachi, Vengeful Kami. A risky keep there with the Cabal Coffers, but we've got three Swamps in hand, if you include the Farhaven Elf. And then there's Mesmeric Orb off of the Ancient Tomb, which I will go for on turn one. Yeah, we're going to be taking a lot of life here, because Mesmeric Orb, two life with Ancient Tomb, and then Ancient Tomb and Shocking this for the Farhaven Elf, but hopefully it will accelerate us nicely. And then a Crop Rotation for us to bin the Ancient Tomb once we get sick of it. Oh, and look at that, we get rid of the Maze's End. I did wonder if it was a Maze's End deck once our opponent played the first gate. Do they have a means of getting Maze's End out of the bin? I mean, surely they do. Because it's pretty easy to get rid of a land if you need to. Sylvan Scrying coming in. I think there's lands that get lands out of the graveyard, isn't there? Yeah, it's Gateway Plaza that they've gone for. Uh, Mesmeric Orb obviously triggers for us as well. Alright, there's a, a basic forest I was going to say, but I think we'll go for a bayou. And then we can go for a basic forest off of the Farhaven Elf, although I think we're yeah, I think we're better stocking up on as many swamps as we can really. I do like to get as many basics in play as possible because of things like Blood Moon and things like that. I wouldn't have thought they'd be playing Blood Moon in a Maze's End deck though, but it's a good habit to get into, not to rely too much on non-basic lands, although I don't take my own advice a lot of the time on that. A Wayward Sawtooth and an Exploration coming down, that's good news, although there's not too many gates coming down thus far. Alright, Days Undoing, that's Shuffle, isn't it? Uh, yeah, each player shuffles their hand and graveyard and draws cards, so... Well, we get back into the Cabal Coffers, get back into the Vernant Catacombs. We have Milled and Urborg, uh, Sator Wayfinder, the Crop Rotation. Why don't we just get down our Commander? Then we'll use the Vernant Catacombs to get down our tapped Shockland. And then we might as well tap our Farhaven Elf in order to mill ourselves more with the Mesmeric Orb. Deal a point of damage to our opponent as well. Sator Wayfinder comes back into our hand. Uh, do we need Cabal Coffers in hand with only... I mean, we can tap down two lands, get back three black. Now, either way, we're on six, aren't we? Let's get rid of Cabal Coffers here. Now, this time, our opponent has Cyclonic Rift, Wayward Sawtooth comes back, and the Trinket Mage. They get into a Mana Crypt, followed by an Expedition Map. And no prizes for guessing what it is that they go for. They grab themselves the maze's end. They get into the exploration again. The uh, yeah, the Modo Shuffler is really weird. The same cards tend to show up on a regular basis. Okay, so just making a bunch of lands a turn. Very few gates coming into play though. And if we're going to have any luck, then they'll mill a bunch of their gates. Anyway, we draw an additional card with Rites of Flourishing. And we get into a sack outlet in Phyrexian Tower. Uh, we'll go mm, definitely Reclamation Sage. I'm not too worried about losing life thanks to the Whip of Erebos. Get rid of that exploration. Then we'll go for Phyrexian Tower and a forest. Take advantage of the Rites of Flourishing. And then if we sacrifice the Reclamation Sage, because I want to reanimate it with the Recurring Nightmare, get ourselves an Experience Counter. We'll go in for Sator Wayfinder, and see if there's anything else that we want to reanimate. In fact, I think we go Woodfall Primus, don't we? Uh, all right, put a land into hand. We put some stuff in our graveyard, uh, Visracea, Sakura, Tribe Elder, Toxic Deluge. Let's go for Recurring Nightmare. Grab ourselves a Woodfall Primus, get rid of the Sator Wayfinder, and then that comes down, and we will kill off the Rites of Flourishing, because it feeds too many cards into our opponent's hand, and we'll see if they can recover from that. They're not having the best of luck getting into Gates at the moment. And then Merin, what do we want Merin to bring back? Uh, we'll go for... We'll go for Sakura Tribe Elder. Sakura Tribe Elder is really good because it um, it sacrifices itself. 
so it can put experience counters on us and it also is easy to reanimate with Merin and of course it ramps us as well preordained from our opponent already getting rid of a gate there uh, that's a shock land as is that yeah so we've gotten rid of another gate I think there's 11 in total and how many do they need I think it's 10 on this isn't it yeah grab ourselves another swamp with the Sakura tribe elder and it looks as though our opponent is just passing the turn 2 4 uh, 6 7 and 8 so they might be holding up mana for the maze's end maybe counter magic maybe cyclonic rift we know they've got that in the deck we continue to mill a whole bunch of stuff uh, there's a mind slicer as well Let's just go in for the forest, we'll go for the Whip of Erebos and start gaining a bit of life. Then let's swing in with everything, I'm thinking Recurring Nightmare, getting rid of the Woodfall Primus, that will come back in with Persist. And we can kill off uh, this gate here, that comes straight through so we can go for that. Uh, let's reanimate the Rune Scarred Demon, get rid of the Woodfall Primus, point the Persisted Primus at the gate, and I don't think they are anywhere close to getting their Maze's End win here. Let's see what they can do, to be honest, to catch us up. Rune Scar Demon does come down. Let's... I don't know what we want to go for here. I don't think it really matters. Let's just go for the Skull Clamp to make their life even more difficult. Grab ourselves a Reclamation Sage that can take care of the Mana Crypt. And then it's a Vampiric Tutor from our opponent. Only one card left in hand, but obviously... They can dictate what they draw into at the beginning of their next turn. We'll have to be careful not to shuffle it away with Maze's End. Then our opponent just plays another land. They mill. Of course, they milled the Damnation. That's what they tutored for with the Vampiric Tutor. Forgetting completely about the Mesmeric Orb. Yeah, I didn't realise they'd done that. I forgot about the Orb myself. Usually you would go for Vampiric Tutor at the end of someone's turn to maximise your mana on your turn. But they should have waited for the orb trigger to resolve and then gone for the tutor into damnation. Even then, to be honest, I don't really think they could have kept up with us all that well. They still only have one card in hand after the damnation cast. Uh, so yeah, I think that was a pretty convincing one for us. Probably a fast one as well. So let's get another game going. Merin of Clan Neltoth versus Emery Lurker of the Lock. And that's not incredible, but I like the Play Crafter. If this is some kind of uh, Voltron build, then I'm thinking that's going to help us. So let's keep that. We get another draw at least because we are on the draw. Just a Mystic Sanctuary to start things off with. It's good to get that out of the way early. We'll go for a tap land ourselves. Oh wow, and then, <laughs> okay, we're obviously up against a, uh, yeah, a more powerful opponent here. So let's see if they decide to go straight in for... Wow, they are really just throwing their hand onto the board, aren't they? Uh, we really need to get rid of Tormod's Crypt before we decide to do anything else. Maelstrom Pulse will help us there. So let's just go for a forest and hope that our opponent doesn't get rid of the Woodland Cemetery with that wasteland. So there it is. Emery coming out with a Swiftfoot Boots. Uh, they have grabbed themselves a Welding Jar. Uh, they've also gotten rid of Paradox Engine, which is unbanned in 1v1. And then they've got the Island, the Defense Grid as well. We are going to go straight in for a Bayou with that. So I'm not as threatened by the Wasteland now. And then as much as I'd love to concentrate on Tormod's Crypt, yeah, we'll just have to go for Playcrafter here, I think. And if they want to get rid of Tormod's Crypt in order to exile this, then fair enough. But if they're struggling to keep their Emery in play, then that's really good for us. They need two more mana to get it out now. Now maybe if we're just going for Merin next turn, then in response to the Playcrafter coming back into hand, it forces them to go Tormod's Crypt. Alright, they get themselves into a rock in Mindstone, get down the Emery again, and back into the Swiftfoot Boots. Then deciding to recast Lotus Petal, they now have... A land, a mirror retriever, and a brainstorm in the bin, as well as an ether spell bomb. So let's go for our commander and see if we can encourage them to get rid of the Tormod's Crypt. They're concentrating on 
casting that all the time, then they're not concentrating on going for lotus petals and things like that. Well, they allow us to have the playcrafter back. One more artifact in play now, so they've cast it twice. They would have four command attacks if we get rid of it again. Uh, so that's four, five, six, and seven, minus one, two, three, four, and five. So it would still only cost two. Oh, and this as well, so... Yeah, we may well struggle to keep it out of play, especially if they can consistently keep playing the artifacts. Springleaf Drum as well, so we really need Bane of Progress at this point, I think. Well, that'll help us get to one. So in that case, let's attempt... We'll go for Maelstrom Pulse onto... Is there any point going for the Swiftfoot Boots? I'd rather just wrap the Swiftfoot Boots up in a Bane of Progress, to be honest. There's no point going for Play Crafter because they can sacrifice this and grab something from the bin, probably the Paradox Engine. Uh, yeah, so it's just a case of sitting back on Vampiric Tutor, I think. Uh, okay, they're going for the Paradox Engine right now, which I'm actually happy about, unless they combo off right here. Because if they go for it now, then I'm hoping that we can wrap it up in the Bane of Progress. Might be that they've got some free counter magic, but hopefully not. Let's go for Vamp Tutor. Go for the Bane of Progress. Obviously we draw into that at the beginning of the turn. Play a land and just windmill slam that thing. And they decide to scoop to that, that's a shame. Uh, I understand why though. We'll get rid of all of their permanents, apart from their commander. And the three lands that they've got. This might be... Closing in on a CEDH level deck, uh, I don't really know, obviously I can't see the deck list, but it's a really low curve anyway, and their plan is to litter the board with a bunch of artifacts and then do god knows what. It'd be really hard to keep Emery out of play, uh, the first plan was to keep it out of play with a consistent play crafter, but if they can keep playing little artifacts every turn then it really keeps the command attacks down. I think she... I think she stops the command attacks. Anyway, I don't know what her ability does in that regard, actually. Maybe you still have to pay the tax. Either way, it wasn't going to be easy with a Tormod's Crypt in play, but a Merin deck beating out a very, very fast Emery deck with a Tormod's Crypt in play. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. Uh, I don't know what would have happened with the Paradox Engine in play next turn. That probably would have made things really, really difficult for us, but... Just managed to top deck into the Vampiric Shooter, so that was a really good win for us, I think. Even though it did entail a little bit of luck. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed these two games from Merin of Clan Neltoth. Be sure to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you did. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.